I actually wasn't going to do this poem, but um, I heard a mental, a mental health poem tonight. I love hearing about people's, uh, I call them superpowers. Hey, um, yeah. So I think you said yours was ADHD minus depression. Uh, so this one is called Black Hole. That was the one that blew my wig back. Yeah, I'm doing oh, it just for you. Oh, oh. <laughs> Hold your wig. Hold your wig. Counting how many black holes that exist in the universe would be equivalent to counting grains of sand on the beach. There are over 100 million alone just in our galaxy. The gravitational pull of a black hole is so powerful that nothing, not even light, can escape. And no one knows much about them because they can't be observed directly. This was the first thing I said in therapy. I told the confused white lady in front of me, I think there's a black hole living inside of me, and I'm terrified that there's no remedy. She asked me, how do you think it got there? That was an easy question. I told her that one star's end is a black hole's beginning. They only form when a star dies in an explosion. And I can't exactly pinpoint what killed the star that once shined inside of me. I'm convinced it was a series of events that dimmed it, unfortunate experiences that left irreversible damage, painful memories that forced it to retreat into the darkness. She asked me, how long have you been feeling this empty? I told her that time is immeasurable when your soul is dying. I've spent days in my room that felt like minutes. I've spent hours in the shower that felt like months. So I could have been feeling this way for years, but I'm just now noticing. She asked me, do you think you have depression? I told her it depends. Does depression feel like death? Because that's how this feels. And I want to live. I'm just having trouble finding the meaning to living. And I don't want to die, but I feel like I'm dying. And I'm not dead, but I'm not alive either. I explained to her that black holes swallow everything they encounter. I watched mine swallow my relationships, my motivation, my happiness. I even tried to feed the positivity, love, and spiritual nourishment. But black holes are endless and selfish. When something goes inside of one, you never see it again. She asked me if I ever thought about taking medication. She wrote me a prescription for antidepressant pills and I still haven't taken one. And I don't know if I'm just waiting for my body to heal itself or if deep down inside I know I'll take them all at once. My therapist asked me if I'm suicidal, but I don't really know what that means because last week I called off work for the 10th time this month just to spend the day alone at the beach. I was tired of wiping the salt water from falling from my eyes and thought about letting the waves wash them away for me. I walked to the edge of the ocean and the cold water shot a chill through my body. I suddenly felt the kiss my father gave me on my forehead that morning and the sad look on my dog's faces when they see me leaving and how my brother kisses me too many times when I come home every day and how my mom tells everyone that I'm her favorite person. I asked her if I think about death but I'm not selfish enough to go through with it. Does that mean I'm suicidal? Because sometimes it's enticing, but I can't imagine what my death would do to my father. My absence would destroy my mother. It would deteriorate my brother. I just don't have it in me to murder the people who love me. Mm. My therapist said that maybe that's the only thing this black hole can't swallow up. That genuine love is stronger than any gravitational force. So I ran home to my mother and stuffed my black hole with her hugs. I poured in laughter from my brother when that wasn't enough. And I used my father's kisses to top it off. And I felt this warmness inside of me for the first time in months. So I replay mental slideshows of my loved ones every day to keep myself afloat. If I can't kill my demons with drugs, I'll kill them with love. I haven't written anything, <laughs> but uh, this is one poem that I did write, and it's um, a poem from my boyfriend's father. When the son you abandoned rises from the guilt in your guts, 
When the sun you neglected sets into the horizon of your mind, what do you imagine the sun you've never seen looks like? I hope you picture a monolith of a man wrapped in ebony leather, dipped in flakes of gold, thick honey lace dress towering from his scalp and his eyes shaped just like yours. His pupils made of diamonds that cut through the dusty windows of your soul, if you even have one of those. Whatever image you think of, you should know that your sun is more brilliant than any visual the neurons in your brain can project into your imagination. You do not deserve to know what type of man he became, how he beat the odds. How your son is a garden that grew with half the soil, half the nurture, half the sunlight, without your hands, without your protection, without you. You should be sinking your knees into a floor every night, hysterically thanking the heavens that his mother had a backbone strong enough to carry your dead weight. And in your next breath, you should thank God that your son has me. Mm. To love him, to be the treasure chest for all his dreams, his goals, his insecurities. You should be thankful that I know what to do with pain, that I know what it looks like, that I can love a black boy who doesn't know what love is. Do you know anything about penguins? Do you know that a male penguin guards his offspring with his life? for 65 days straight without moving once, without eating, in negative 30 degree weather, a male piglin stays put just to give his eggs warmth. And all you did was penetrate an egg and leave. How weak, how weak of a man you must be if a flightless bird can be a better father than you. Thank you.